riding full circle playing in traffic. When I threw the fist-sized rock in my hand at the Bolivian man's car door, his eyes opened wide, forcing salt and pepper brows, like fat caterpillars, to scurry up and be eaten into the creases of his forehead. Clearly this was more surprising to him than what prompted his first response to me, spat out in Spanish after he caused me to hit the ditch, why are you riding this big motorcycle? You're a woman. It was April 1st, 2016, a fool's day indeed. Dave and I had left Coraco and were riding to La Paz, but we'd decided to take some back roads along the way. We were over three months into our two-year round-the-world trip and I had yet to master riding a motorcycle in mud. I'd dropped my G650 GS five times already in a 30-mile stretch and was at the end of my rope when I came around the corner to meet my sexist senior, straddling the mucky road like there couldn't possibly be anyone else using it. I was following about 30 meters behind Dave's bike. Out of the corner of my left eye, I saw a black dog barreling down the slope toward us. He was mid-sized, maybe a Rottweiler. His eyes were set on Dave. Mine were focused on the road. The dog would come to a screeching halt of dust and fur before the cliff edge, right? Although Dave had passed by and was now out of attack range, the dog didn't break its pace. While I picked up my speed, closing the gap, I saw this insane beast launch Superman-style high over my head. A baby pig is not as small as you might think. The 650 bucked and swerved while I tried to keep it on course to the tune of baby pig squeals. It got stuck in my skid plate and dragged for a few meters before the final blow of my back tire finished him off. Again I couldn't look. Not only to avoid imprinting the damage of yet another animal into my brain, but also because if the farmer was nearby I'd likely get into a lengthy discussion of what was fair payback for hitting one of his food sources. My guilt lasted all day. Now into the 21st month of our two-year trip, having ridden over 45,000 miles through 29 countries, we still recall road time in Peru and Bolivia as being among the more frightening, although some countries in Eastern Africa are a close second and we haven't traveled across Russia yet. Sure, you might come around a single lane corner with no guardrail and meet either a transport truck or a splatter of rocks in the road but how many places in North America allow you to pass under a waterfall while driving, as we experienced along the death road in Bolivia? Or disappear into one of 42 one-way tunnels where no one actually knows who has the right of way, like traveling through the Canon del Pato, 